801010 is a wonderful place to start if you're new to homemade raw feeding, but it isn't a good place to stop. Depending on the proteins that you're using and the variety of cuts of meat that you're using, your cat's diet could be deficient in essential nutrients just by following this ratio alone. Now, a lot of people who do 801010 make the statement that, well, cats in the wild do not eat supplements. Yes, of course, I know that. But what they do eat is a large variety of whole prey. And whole prey provides a lot more that isn't really provided in PMR or 801010 ratio diets. So we can start with 801010 or my preferred ratios that I use for Jericho's diet. And then we use formulation software to fill in those nutritional gaps with whole foods or supplements when necessary. Jericho eats whole prey quail and a bunch of variety in his diet and I only use two supplements. Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. It is a blessing that you are here, hallelujah. Yeah. So first of all, what is 80-10-10? This stands for 80% muscle meat, which would include the muscular organs, 10% bone, 10% secreting organs. So this is what BARF and PMR typically follow when we're creating raw food diets for cats. And this ratio comes from, let's just try to mimic whole prey, <laughs> what whole prey provides. So that's where those numbers come from. So this is just a baseline to work off of. And I mentioned that I use a more adjusted and my preferred ratio for Jericho's diet. So his diet is 10% whole prey, 44% muscle meat, 5% fish, 21% muscular organ, 8% raw meaty bones, 12% secreting organs. Now that raw meaty bone percentage is only including just the bone. So the meat on that bone is going towards the muscle meat category. And just a reminder, we always feed raw meaty bones, not just bone only. But when we're looking at ratios, that's the distinction there, is that the 8% is just the edible bone portion and the meat on that bones, the meat on them bones, goes towards the muscle meat category. Jericho also eats egg yolks and two supplements, but this is a really, really small amount of his diet. It's not even about 1% of his entire diet. So those are just the ratios that are the bulk of his diet. Is 801010 complete for cats? No, it is not. Even if you're using a large amount of variety, you're still going to have to fill in nutritional gaps somewhere. Typically, 801010 diets can be deficient in iron, zinc, manganese, iodine, and vitamins B1, E, and D, especially when there isn't a lot of variety. And just to show you an example, I put together a mock PMR 801010 ratio diet for muscle meat. This is going to be 52% because I'm breaking up the muscle meat and muscular organs. So muscle meat, 52%, beef chuck stew meat, and turkey thigh. For the muscular organs, we're going to have 28%. So that plus 52 is 80, that's the 80% muscle meat. So muscular organs, 28%, chicken heart, turkey gizzard, beef green tripe. For raw meaty bones, we're gonna use 10%, so chicken wing and chicken neck. And for the secreting organs, another 10%, beef liver and beef kidney. And I chose these ingredients because there is a lot of variety. These are typical proteins that cats eat, and these are also ingredients that most people have access to at the grocery store, with the exception of the beef green tripe. That is not the same as the white tripe that you see at the grocery store but I wanted to include it just to show that even if we include this variety, it's still going to be deficient. So this specific 801010 recipe is deficient in iron, iodine, vitamin E, and vitamin B1. And if we did not include the raw green tripe, it would also be deficient in manganese. Additionally, the calcium to phosphorus ratio is off, so we've got 0.9, to one instead of one to one, which is what the AFCO, the NRC, and the FEDIAF recommend. So one for calcium, one for phosphorus. Right now we're at 0.9 for calcium and one for phosphorus. So we need more calcium. This is typically the case because with raw meaty bones, again, you got meat on them bones. So you're going to have phosphorus as well as calcium. So typically we use eggshell powder or freeze dried bone powder to bring the calcium up so that it is the proper ratio. Interestingly, the feral cat's diet is more like 1.4, 1.5 to one. So they get even more calcium than what these organizations recommend for nutritional guidelines. Now it's time for our member shout outs. Thank you so much to all of our supporting members. We appreciate you 
so much. Just take a look at those beautiful cats. Your monthly contribution helps me continue the work that we do, produce these videos, maintain our online business so that we can help cat parents all around the world feed their cats better. You make all of this possible. If you would like to become a member, put your cat up on the big screen, get exclusive access to bonus content, and support our work, go ahead and pause that join button below this video. There's also a link in the description. Thank you again to all of our supporting members. Now let's get back to the video. So what do I need to add to 801010 to... <laughs> so what do I need to add to 801010 to make it complete? Well, it depends entirely on the proteins that you're using and the cuts that you're using. For example, turkey gizzard and chicken gizzard provide different nutrient profiles just like chicken and beef provide different nutrient profiles, just like chicken liver and beef liver have different nutrient profiles. So it's not just the protein, but also the cuts that offer a variety of nutrients. And of course, if you have lack in variety of protein and cuts that you're using, you are going to need more supplements because there could be more deficient nutrients in the diet. Now, of course, I always recommend using whole foods, but at the same time, we might have to use some supplements when we can't use whole foods. So here are some typical nutrients that might be lacking and some whole foods that we can use to fill in those nutritional gaps. So for potassium, we can use beef stew meat or turkey thigh. Typically, potassium might be an issue if you're only feeding chicken. For iron, we can use spleen from either beef, lamb, or pork. That's exactly why I include beef spleen in Jericho's diet so that he gets all of the iron that he needs from food. For copper, we can use liver from either lamb, beef, or veal. For zinc, we can use lean beef, chicken heart, or oysters. For manganese, we can use green tripe. Again, not the same as white tripe. We gotta use the stinky kind, the stinky green tripe. So for manganese, again, green tripe, we can use blue mussels or oysters. Now, blue mussels are recommended a lot, but I've personally never seen blue mussels at the grocery store, even at the Asian market, even online. Typically, it's green-lipped mussels, which has less manganese than blue mussels, and we don't wanna use a lot of blue mussels because that's, compared to the feral cat diet, they eat a very small amount of the sea creatures, sea critters. So it makes more sense for, to me to use green tripe because I can't find blue mussels anywhere. If you've found them, let me know in the comments. For iodine, we use kelp and dulse, so technically not coming from meat, but I would say that algae makes sense because if cats in the wild are drinking from water or if they're eating little sea critters, they might eat some algae as well. For vitamin D, we use fish. So I mentioned that for Jericho, I use 5% fish. This is either salmon or sardines. And I specifically use that amount because that's enough to fulfill the vitamin D requirements. We don't wanna do too much fish because we don't want that to offset other nutrients. And too much fish can also cause picky eating. But an appropriate amount of fish, like salmon or sardines, is absolutely fantastic for natural vitamin D. For vitamin E, this one's a little trickier because it is highest in plant ingredients and it is very low in meat ingredients. So you will have to use a vitamin E oil. The other option is chlorella, spirulina, wheatgrass. They typically have high amounts of vitamin E but you're also going to get higher amounts of other nutrients. So you don't wanna offset anything too much. If you're only using it for the vitamin E, we would have to just use a vitamin E oil. For the B vitamins, B1, you can use pork tenderloin or nutritional yeast. I use nutritional yeast for Jericho. And for B9, you can use chicken heart, beef liver, beef kidney, and lamb is also high in B9. Now I'm giving you this information so that you can take it to diet formulation software. Don't just mix and match ingredients. Obviously we wanna make sure that we are offering a complete diet to our cats. If you don't know how to formulate, you'd rather use a complete recipe. Use this as a guide to look for these ingredients in the recipe that you're choosing. If you don't know where to start, I do have a monthly membership where I do group coaching calls every month. I also have a self-paced video course teaching you how to make homemade cat food and a library of complete raw meaty bones and boneless recipes for you to choose from. So you can check the link in the description below for my membership. But we wanna to aim to around five to seven proteins in the diet. I think that this is a good starting point. So for example, for Jericho, he eats whole prey quail, beef, lamb, 
and chicken and salmon or sardines. So he's got a small amount of fish and he has equal parts birds to equal parts ruminating animals. And that red meat is really important for certain nutrients, just like the white meat is important for certain nutrients. So again, we wanna have a variety of the proteins and also the cuts that we're using. And if you're not quite sure if homemade is worth it for you, check out this video right over meow where I discuss the amazing benefits of feeding your cat homemade raw. Thanks for watching.